Amen. I thank God this morning for his grace and his mercy. Thank him for the opportunity. Appreciate our pastor. Give me the opportunity to speak to you this morning. You know, when we say that God changes our messages, he really does. Not until Sister Fee starts singing that song this morning, it changed. I have decided to follow Jesus. Do we, do, we, do we know the meaning behind that song? Have you ever heard of the history behind that song? Because when she started singing that, my mind went right back to it. So if you allow me a few minutes, I'd like to go over the history of that song. Sister Fee, can you put that up for me? And before I do that, I'm going to read in your hearings, Matthews, the ninth chapter. Starting at verse 36. Matthews 9 and 36. And when Jesus saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them. Because they fainted and were scattered abroad as a sheep having not a shepherd. Then said he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plenteous, but the labors are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he will send forth labors into his vineyard. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, God, for leaving it on record for us. God, you wouldn't give us a command, Lord, if you didn't give us what we need to fulfill that. All of us, Lord, that's sitting right here, you have prepared to spread your word. Wherever we are, in our schools, our jobs, in our homes, even in the sanctuary, God, you have equipped us because, God, we were made for this. In Jesus' name, amen. That song is very precious to me, especially after I read some history about that song, how it came about. Amen. And this morning, I was going a totally different way. Spent some time in, in, the, in the sermon. But when I heard that song from Sister Felicia, it just changed. It's all about missions, y'all. I know we talk about that, but the Lord has really pressed on me about missions. Then our pastor kind of sent me a text message early, 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock in the morning. I don't know if he even sleeps, y'all. And I said, this is too early to go back and forth. I'll catch him a little later. So I called him about 4.35, I think it was. Hallelujah. But God has created us to, to give our life away. Not necessarily all the time that's, is, as a martyr, but we're not our own. We say we're not our own, but we're not our own. We were bought with a price. We were bought with a price. The blood of Christ. Sister Fee, can you sing two verses of that song? For they, some just came in. They might not know that song you were singing. I've decided to follow Jesus. Decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back. No turning back. Thank you, Jesus. Have you decided to follow Jesus? The 
cross is before us and the world is behind us. When we decide to follow Christ, the cross is here, the world is here. And it's not a 360 degree turn. But we go forward. So about 150 years ago, there was a revival in Wales. As a result of this, many missionaries came from the northeast, India, to spread the gospel. The region was known as Assam and was comprised of 100 tribes who was primitive and aggressive headhunters. So they wasn't hearing, they wasn't about hearing nothing you had to say. Your gospel, your Christ, they had nothing. They didn't want to hear anything about that because they had their own thing going on. And to these hostiles and aggressive communities came a group of missionaries from America. They were Baptist missionaries, guys. They were Baptist missionaries. They were spreading the message of love, peace, and hope. And Jesus Christ. Naturally, they were not welcome. That's why you don't have everybody going into certain places when it comes to mission. Everybody can't do that. Like Sister Lafrida Riley says, I was born for this. You might not be born for that particular one, but you were born to do missions. Either way, either you go down into missions, into the valley or the jungles, or you one of the people that hold the rope while the other one go down. And like I heard someone say, it's either way, your hands are scarred. There's pain. There's something that you put into it when it comes to mission. And that's the Great Commission. That's what Jesus had appointed us to do. That's why he told the disciples to go until you endow with power from on high. We don't want to be going to missions if we don't have power. We're not going to be a spectator. We're not just going to hand out drinks and hot dogs. The main purpose is the gospel. Find a way to preach the gospel of Christ because that changes people. And you're going to hear this story shortly how the gospel changed this chief. Only the gospel could do that. I don't care how many huts you might have built for him, temples or whatever churches you might have built for him, but the gospel changed his life. But one missionary succeeded in converting a family and his wife and two children. This man's faith proved contagious and many other villagers began to accept Christ. But the chief who was over the village, he summons all of the villagers. Then he called the family who was first converted. He wanted them to renounce the faith in public or faith execution. Moved by the Holy Spirit, the man said, I have decided to follow Jesus. In the faith of danger, y'all, he said, I have decided to follow Jesus. In that moment when the gospel was preached unto him, the Spirit of God did something in him and changed him. It didn't take a month, two years. But at that moment, I understand and I hear the testimonies where it's a special anointing. It's something different when you go into missions, especially when you're going out to foreign missions. God gives you the grace at that moment, at that time. You might say, well, I can't do it. But whatever you need, God will give it to you in that moment. You just go. You just go. So the chief was enraged as the man refused. The chief ordered the archers, those with born arrows, pointed at their two children as both boys were standing there they shot those arrows and those arrows went straight into those two boys his boys 
and they were twitching on the floor. Then the chief asked him again, will you deny your faith? You have lost two children. You will lose your wife too. Will you renounce your faith? But the man replied, though no one joins me, still I will follow Jesus. The cross was before him. The world was behind him. So the chief was beside himself with fury. Next thing, he ordered his wife to be arrowed down. In a moment, she also joined her two children in death. So he asked for the last time, I will give you one more opportunity to deny your faith and live. In the face of death, the man said, finally, he said these lines, the cross before me, the world behind me. He says, no turning back. He said, there's no turning back. When the gospel is preached, it changes us, saints. All this other stuff we do for fame or crowds or whatever it might be, money. But when you preach the gospel of Christ, it'll make a man that was twitching a few minutes ago, he'll walk straight out like a man. That woman or that boy or that girl that struggled with a sexual thing, preaching the gospel to them, not hating them, but loving them, but preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, it would change them. And them, and they themselves would become a mission. It would be about Christ. They'll go and spread the gospel to others that they can reach. Because they were born for that. But we got to give them the word of God. We got to give them the gospel. We got to spend time in the word of God. We got to spend time in prayer. Not always trying to jump up and be in front of people. But spend time with Christ and see who he is. Let him change you. I guarantee you those things that you struggle with, you'll start seeing those things just passing away. Later on, you'll look around and say, where did that go? But don't always remember the devil is still there. He's coming. See, but you're placing a wall between you and him. You're placing the blood of Christ. You're placing the power, the authority of Christ. When the enemy comes in as a flood, the Spirit of God will lift up that standard against him. When we spend time with the Lord in prayer, he was shot dead, so he wouldn't denounce Christ. So they end up shooting him dead. He was shot dead like the rest of his family. But watch this. But with their death, a miracle took place. The chief who had ordered the killing, he was moved by the faith of that man. He wondered... Why should this man, his wife, his two children die for a man who lived far away in another continent some 2,000 years ago? There must be something. There must be something remarkable and powerful behind that family's faith. Guess what he says? I, too, want to taste that faith. spontaneously the confession of his faith he declared I too belong to Jesus Christ when the crowd heard this from the mouth of their chief the whole village accept Jesus as their Lord and their Savior that's what the gospel does that's what the gospel does I understand now to a certain point I never went to foreign missions but that's 
that's in the future. I really believe that there's anointing, like I hear a lot of you say it and told me before. There's anointing God places on you when you go do missions. I was looking at something the other day. Wasn't looking for it. This man had spent 10 years in one village teaching them about the gospel of Christ. They didn't have a Bible in their language, so they got a, other people involved and they made a Bible for their language. You know, and I wonder sometimes, I know you probably do too. We see more of our light skinned brothers and sisters seem like they're doing mission to folks who look like me and you more than we to our own people. We weren't born to just be comfortable, to have houses and planes and automobiles. But whatever God has given you and placed in your care is for the gospel of Christ. It's for the gospel of Christ. God has blessed us to be a help to others. Everything that you have, it does not belong to you. It belongs to Christ. And you get no joy. You really get no joy out of it until you give it to Christ. We see day after day, we see celebrities, we see millionaires, we see Fortune 500 CEOs. Looks like out of character. Some of them taking their lives. We see the killings. Money doesn't give you joy. It does not give you joy. Being on the on the newsstand and all on television, it doesn't give you joy. God, because God has placed in our hearts something that yearns for Him. Because we were created for Him, it's something in you longs for Him. And we go looking elsewhere for it. But that's God. You were created for Him. And our heart just run restless until it finds Him. It's going here and it's going there. It's going here and it's going there. But God has created us to worship Him. He loves us so much. When we were yet sinners, He died for us. We didn't even care about him, but because of his love, he died. And there's a couple of things I'm gonna, and I'm gonna sit down because it doesn't take much. All I need to tell you about the gospel: if the gospel pricks your heart, and you say, "Lord, I want to be that way," just say, "Lord, I'm here." Two things when it comes, four things when it comes to excuses we take because of missions. Again, Matthews 9 and 38, the Lord of the harvest, I pray earnestly that as obstacles are removed, you would send laborers from this gathering into the harvest, that you are preparing among the unreached peoples of the world. Four things we say sometimes, I'm not worthy to go. Christ has made us worthy. You can't make yourself worthy yourself. But Christ has made us worthy. Then the next thing you want to say, well, I'm not called. It says you were made for this. You were made for missions. All of us should be about missions. You might say, well, I'm not able. If you have spiritual gifts... You have a heart of passions and abilities, personalities and experiences. God has created you for missions. We can't be comfortable behind four walls anymore. Look what's happening right now. You might say, well, it's not my job. It's not my job description. I'll tell you, yes, it is. There's obstacles in our way. 
That's because of our nature. Our flesh does not want to die. It does not want to give our lives over to Christ. The enemy does not want to show you, let you see that joy that God has placed in front of you. That's why the God of this world, he can try to blind our mind. He tries to have us looking at this and looking at that. You can't look at everything on the television. Me and my wife was trying to look at something the other day on a regular channel. And what we seen, I said, just can't be right. On a, on a regular channel. And we just, I have no favorite TV shows at all. I have none. Because I have decided to follow Christ. Many emphasis reform us against soul saving. You know, we, we, we think about when it comes to salvation, it's just not raising your hands and say, I accept the Lord, I accept the Lord. Just like this missionary did when they were speaking in the gospel, if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart, God has raised you, shall be saved. How many could say that if somebody was standing right in front of you with born arrows? You live for this. You die for this. And it doesn't take much for you because Christ is all, all in all. He's everything to you. So I will leave with you. The cross is before me. The world is behind me. I've decided to follow Jesus. There's no turning back. There's no turning back. In Jesus' name, I pray. God, we just thank you for how you've blessed us and how you've kept us. And God, how you, God, how you are thrusting us into this next season. And we thank you, God, for how you open up our eyes, our understanding. God, so that we will seek you. God, we will be vessels that you can use, oh God. That we will declare a yes. Yes, Lord, to your will. Yes, to your ways. Yes, to your word. We will declare a yes, God. We'll go where you tell us to go. Yes, God, we'll do what you tell us to do. Yes, Lord, we will be examples of God. God, whether you call us to be local, whether you've called us to be foreign, God, we will be vessels that you can use. And God, for those that said, I'm scared, God, we know that you have not given us a spirit of fear. And God, you give us a spirit of sound mind, oh God, and we trust you. Because God, if you said it, God, we're going to follow it. Even to the extent, oh God, that if it costs us our lives, God, we're going to want to be built, we want to be guilty of obeying you and obeying your word, obeying your commands. Bless us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen and amen. We're going to want to ask if you go ahead and be seated. We're going to go ahead and get our offering according to our program. And then we're going to get ready for communion. So if I can get my deacons, ministers, maybe to assist them and getting our dedicatory offering if you would I know most of the time we don't but it's reading the program if you've already thinking I think those they were back there did somebody move they back okay
preacher was talking, I would remind you of us being in mission on foreign soil and how how the Holy Ghost just moves. There's multiple times when you're there and God just used you through interpreters and several times where the Holy Ghost is speaking to you. You speak to the interpreter and the interpreter speaks to the people. The Holy Ghost speak to you. You speak to the interpreter. The interpreter speak to the people. It's fascinating to watch God just move and brings a oneness to it. No pauses. One of the most fascinating things I've ever experienced when God is using you in the midst of that. You're fascinated that he's using you in the midst of that. Hallelujah. But as the preacher said, there's an anointing that comes with it. Hallelujah. I believe that the Lord equips you, he anoints you. Hallelujah. With for service. And then when you go off in the foreign field and then when you come back locally, those um, spirits that he gave you dominion on or foreign soil, when you come back on home soil, you have dominion over those things. I know sometimes people say, I'm scared. Well, you know, we did it. We didn't speak the language. The other thing that it does is you truly have to depend on God because you land in places your GPS won't help you get out your map won't help you get out the only thing going to get you out is the one that sent you and you recognize that I have to depend on God I trust you I trust you I risk everything coming into this place and I'm dependent on you to bring me out and if you don't bring me out of this place I'll see you over in glory that's a commitment Some gave out of the excess, some gave out of their need, God. But we ask that you bless it and return to them plus 100 fold because of the sacrifices that were made. Bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. We're going to now get ready for our communion service. Hallelujah. We're going to ask. communion as a just take one I'll serve you first we do 
this. The Lord told us to do this in remembrance of him. And as I said, we're going to serve. The same night, Jesus took the bread as we do now. The Bible said he blessed it, break it, and he blessed it. Father, we thank you for this wafer that represents your flesh. God, we thank you for the sacrifice that you made for us on the cross. And you told us in your word, oh God, to do this in remembrance of you. We ask God that you bless it and sanctify it and that it be used for the nourishment of our bodies. In Jesus' name, amen. Take ye eat. After taking the bread, he then he takes the juice the wine. And the Bible said after the same manner, he also took the cup. As I do ministering in his name, he takes the wine. And when he had supped, saying, this is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it, do so in remembrance of me. Father, we thank you for this juice that represents your blood. God, we ask that you bless and you sanctify and allow it to be used for the nourishment of our bodies and our bodies as we serve you in Jesus' name. Amen. Take your drink. Do this in remembrance of him. If you want to be served, we're going to ask if you would stand.